Hello, I'm Sand Rennie. Welcome to our art exhibition. The Armchair Painting Group was set up online in June 2020 and it was set up to provide a home and a secure place for artists who wanted to share their work and who wanted to get technical advice and constructive criticism from each other and be inspired by fellow artists. Some of us are absolute beginners. Some of us haven't held a paintbrush for decades. Some of us paint occasionally as therapy to get our feelings out on paper. And some of us are professional artists. But we are all artists. We all want and need to get images down on paper to communicate to other people. Our members are all ages from young adults right the way through to people in their 70s. This is our first exhibition, representing four months of being creative. There are five short films and these contain the works of 10 artists. Come, oh, let's go, let's get going. Dream of Summer. A purple haze hangs over the purple moor. The honey-sweet heather ruffled here and there by a languid evening breeze. The sun is setting in an auburn burnt umber sky as we make our way back down the track and into the cool, enclosing green. Branches filled with full-throated song, the green wood celebrates the coming night, as do we, footsore and content and far less musical. Time and the scent of lemons spill about our door, a scatter of snail trails making silvery patterns underfoot, and inside, the promise of warm toes and warm hearts, soft voices in unison, a soft blanket's embrace, and dreams of cerulean blue. She should have known it would be the grocer, who had given her sweets as she shopped with her parents, that would have banged on her door as the sun rose. She should have known it would be the farmer, who smiled and waved at her when she ran laughing through a field that would have brought the torch. She should have known it would be the butcher's wife, whose broken leg she had set, who would have dragged her from her home. She should have known, on and on the list grew, as everyone she had ever known, bound her hands and burned her house to the ground. The priests reciting prayer, the townsfolk chanting, Witch! Witch! as she was dragged across the ground, before finding her feet, her legs stinging with blood. The trial was short and full of nonsense of crops failed, of devils conjured, marriages broken, and unnaturally flame-red hair. At last, at least, she was guilty of. It had brightened from brown over the years until it was as red as the sunrise, bleeding across the new sky, a phenomenon she could not explain. Not to them. Not a word of hers was heard, as she pleaded, begged and bargained, as she spoke of lives saved with care and herbs, as the brand was pressed into her skin. Witch! Witch. I had been made especially for her, before she was dragged once more out of a building, this time towards a pyre, built towards the still rising sun. Piles of wood, Nailed to one another, splintered and tore at her skin as her arms dragged behind her around that beam. A torch held high to cheers and sneers. Witch! Witch. The flames began to dance around her ankles. Her own element turned against her, a symbol of protection, power and life, used to burn her alive. As her feet blistered, all words of pleading and mercy ran silent. 
into sobs of fear and pain. The village watched, gleeful, and as the flames rose and clothes caught fire, Witch! witch. She was not a witch. If she were, she would have stolen the water from the earth, the trees, and poured it into the clouds above, opening the sky to her defence. She screamed to that sky, to the logs at her feet, at the wind and the air, to the water that would not save her now, to the blaze that was killing her. It heard and went cold, still burning the flesh from her bones, emitting the smoke that choked her, but she felt nothing. Fire, her protection and power once more. Fire bore her into this world, and it would take her from it, and it would bring her back once more. Tomorrow, a soul would be born with ashen hair. Ash would turn to flame, and she would remember. She would not forgive, and she would not forget. But tomorrow, she would be somewhere else, and she would be a healer once again. Humanity, a poem by Angel Kershaw. Once I was just like you, being judged by others too, the well-heeled, well-fed passing by, looking down with disapproving eyes. I remember well the blackness, the hurt, the burning shame, and years now, after that has gone, I will never be the same. So few of us will know such pain, Yet I pray we all can see a part of you in each of us, a door to our humanity. For let us not judge others, unless we have been there too. Let us not just pass on by, but show that we see you and your humanity. Life emerges. The red sun glowed weakly in the depths of space. On the young earth, the first seed of life was gently cradled in rich black mud. In wet places, in oceans, in ponds and streams, the single-celled life form morphed into multi-celled beings. It became life with motivation. Life with a face. A dragonfly emerged, as did a newt, which raced to feast upon the insect's fleeting body. A frog floated by, squatting on a magic carpet of DNA. It floated high into the starry sky. It drifted into the misty future and transformed into the first human creature. She gave birth to a single human hermaphrodite. They felt small and alone, so alone that they squatted down and spontaneously gave birth to twins, tiny versions of themselves. So the human race was formed. The sun grew bright and strong. The grass grew lush and long. The sunflowers grew high, and the earth continued to turn in the eternal ethereal sky. There's a monster in my eye. I don't know how it got there, or when it clawed its way inside. Maybe I was napping, my eyelids primed for prying, and a beastling seeped beneath or a piece of grit, not worth the swiping, carried a seed through my pupil, and once rooted, sprouted a demon before I could even blink. I don't know. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter. There's a monster in my brain, stifled prowling behind my corneas. 
I told my mum, once. She still smiling cupped my cheek. You should get that checked. She laughed and kissed my lids. It smashed my head into the wall when she left. She doesn't, she doesn't understand. understand. She doesn't understand. There's a monster in my eye, and I can feel it growing stronger. I feel it straining at my seams, so close beneath my surface, whispering secrets to my tears. When the rabble bang and bump me like the haughty bitch who cut me like I'm nothing, because her drink's far more important than the duty to be polite. I think they see. She did. With her smirk, she turned all gloating till she glimpsed fangs on my waterline and drool pouring down my cheek. I know she saw it. She stopped breathing as it smiled, peeking out beneath my iris. She, she ran, ran fast. fast. She ran fast, looking behind her all the way. I don't think she realised she was safe. It's caged between my lashes, but it's growing every day. Black as ink and twice as heavy, spewing poison in my lashes, peeling laughter in my dreams. It bulges when I blink now, ripping muscles, fighting, biting, gnawing, till my capillaries flood wide open and what once was white burns red and raw. I can't see my darkest other, but I hear her growing restless, feel the burst of sinful pleasure when someone finally sees her face. I crave it. We crave it. To be seen, to know that someone knows she lives there now, this monster in my eye. So alone, for so long, beast and burden. It's such a paltry price to pay. It would only take a moment, a simple admission on their part. Yes, I see it. Instead, they lie. They lie, they make her angry, and I am tired of always fighting, keeping her silent when she's screaming, because she's just as trapped as I am. And these bastards won't stop ripping at the nerves already shredded. Then the moment when they see me. A blinding flash, so sweet and clear, their eyes are blurring out of focus till they fall upon the demon playing, preying on their fear. They swap breath for understanding, and she sings with their attention, and the sticky blood on my hands, sticky blood on blood on my hands, is a paltry price to pay for the sleep I only get when she, embraced in bliss, lies trembling, coiled up, tiny, in my iris, a soft sigh upon her face. Make, make them, them see. see. We make them see, one by one, the stranger on the dark street and the lady from the lane's end, the pale man from the graveyard smoke still curling from his nostrils, and the lady from the bus stop, painted smile still twisted pretty, as she landed, blinking upwards, at the weeping grateful beast. All fall so low when they glimpse her in my eye. Don't, Don't forget. forget. Never. Like him. His name beneath my mention, on sharp grass he forced my head down. He stayed cold for all my pleading, ground my face into the soil. At first so shy was she to meet him, and I wondered if she'd seen then, as he ripped my pretty pink tights, pushed me down onto my knees. By the end I know he saw her, with his tool blunted behind him, as she showed her snarling visage and the glinting of her claws. His gaze gave her no pleasure, but I drank down rage so deeply that she feared then I might drown. Never stop. She's grown and far too big now. Couldn't stop you if I tried. And I wouldn't. And I need you, shadowed sister, dearest monster in my eye. She keeps me sane, my darkling saviour. And she sees the world like I do. Just a rotting, broken carcass. But through her, I'm not alone. People see her so much clearer now. She wears my willing skin. My mind splits wide and eager by her questing appetite. Precious lullabies she sings me as she gorges full and deep, keeping me dreaming far away from fearful bleatings of the sheep. I'm tucked down so deep and safe now as her claws slip through my lash line and I need not hear the screaming as she looses her red wrath, slumbering in her ink-cool shadows all I've needed, so I let her drink her fill. It doesn't matter. Don't you see? There's, There's a, a monster, monster in my eye. eye. Thank you.